This video is inspired by one of my viewers, Bill Farrell. You know how a few months ago I posted a video on Russian cutlets? Well, not only has Bill made the cutlets, but he made a whole bunch of other stuff out of that mix. Just look at these lovely grilled lamb patties. <laughs> Bill's pictures always make me hungry. I love it when I make something to inspire you, and then you make something to inspire me. So today we're turning this master recipe for a ground meat mixture into Italian American meatballs. Let's start with the sauce. It helps to choose the right size of pan for it, so that all your meatballs can fit. I use a 12-inch pan with straight sides. If you start with somewhere between 2 and 2.5 and pounds of meat for your meatballs, they'll fit into this pan just right in a single layer. If you're using a pan with a smaller diameter, make sure it's deep enough, since you'll have to cook your meatballs in two layers. Once you've chosen your pan, set it over medium heat, add 3 tablespoons of olive oil and a couple of diced yellow onions, and a generous pinch of salt. Cook, stirring occasionally until the onions turn translucent. If they are browning too fast, turn down the heat. A little bit of color is good, but we don't want them to turn crispy. Once they look like this, add 4 minced garlic cloves and a pinch of chili flakes. This tiny pinch will not make your sauce spicy, but it will give it a very pleasant warmth. Add a pinch of salt and cook stirring for a couple of minutes until the garlic is aromatic. Add a 28-ounce can of tomatoes with all their juice. Today I have crushed, but diced or whole will work too. If your tomatoes are whole, crush them with your hand before adding. Add a cup of dry white wine and a bay leaf. Stir everything together and simmer until the sauce is thick enough to your liking. Taste and add some sugar and salt to taste. Mine needed a teaspoon of sugar and a pinch of salt. Keep in mind that some tomatoes are salt salted and some unsalted, so how much salt you'll need will vary. Here is the final thickness I'm looking for. You know my love of ratios and percentages. Today, the amount of meat I happen to be working with is 2.6 pounds. That's what two packages ended up being. Obviously, you might have more or less meat, but you can use the percentages below to figure out all your other ingredient amounts. Bread is what keeps our meatballs tender. Any white or sourdough bread will work as long as the inside is relatively soft. Cut off the crusts, cut the bread into cubes, and weigh the right amount. It should be 10% of your meat weight, which is 118 grams. Add kefir and mix to coat the bread thoroughly. Buttermilk or regular milk would work too. Let the bread soak while preparing the other ingredients. We'll need 70 grams of celery, 165 grams of yellow onions, 4 garlic cloves, and 35 grams of parsley leaves. Chop everything coarsely, and the food processor will do the rest. We'll also need 60 grams of cold, unsalted butter cut into little cubes. After you cut it up, put it back in the fridge until you need it and 60 grams of parmesan cheese. You could certainly grate it on a microplane grater, but that's a lot of cheese and would take a while. Since I will need a food processor anyway, I'll just give it a coarse chop and finish in the processor. Dump in the parmesan and pulse it until it turns into tiny crumbs. Get it out and set aside. Dump in the onions, celery, garlic, and parsley, and pulse until you get small pieces. It should not be a smooth puree. It should look like this. Add the bread kefir mixture and the butter and pulse until everything is finely minced. Here is what it looks like. Put this mixture into a bowl and it's time for the meat. Mine is a meatloaf mix that contains beef, pork, and veal. 
The most important thing is not which animal you're using, but which grind you are using. It needs to be a fine grind that's uncompressed, so no vacuum sealed packages. Otherwise, your meatballs will be too dense. Add salt, black pepper, and parmesan, and mix really well. I start by distributing the bread and veggies throughout the meat as evenly as possible without compressing the meat. Once I get an even distribution, I can get much more aggressive without worrying that I'll toughen the meat. Stop as soon as you get a homogeneous mixture. I like medium-sized meatballs. These are 75 grams each. To speed up shaping, I portion the mix for six or seven meatballs and then roll each pile. I ended up with 25 meatballs. Three is a good number for one person, so this amount will feed eight people. Preheat the oven to 300 degrees. Set a non-stick pan over medium-high heat and add one tablespoon of high heat oil like canola or grapeseed. When the oil is hot, Add the meatballs in a single layer. To fit them all, I used two pans, a 12-inch and a 10-inch. If you want to do it in batches, I suggest you wash the pan after the first batch so that the brown bits don't burn. Cook until the first side browns. Flip and cook on the other side. Regulate the heat as necessary to achieve steady browning, but no burning. Browning round things on all sides is obviously impossible and, in this case, completely unnecessary. I do three sides and call it a day. We are not trying to create crispy meatballs. We just want some mired reaction to give us the complexity of flavor. Once your meatballs look something like this, put them into tomato sauce. Scoop out some of the fat but don't drive yourself crazy. Add a splash of water and bring to a simmer while scraping up the brown bits. Meatballs are so sticky that they produce brown bits even in a non-stick pan. Pour this stuff over your meatballs. I like to brush the tops with a little bit of the fat that I spooned out of the pan. Using all of that fat would make them too greasy, but a little bit will help the tops brown. Bring to a simmer on top of the stove and pop into the oven until they are done to your liking. You have two choices here. For juicier but firmer meatballs, just get them to the internal temperature of 160, which will take about 15 minutes. For softer but less juicy meatballs, cook them for a full hour. Whichever way you go, let them rest at least 15 minutes. It's up to you what to do with the fat on top of the sauce. You can certainly skim it off, but it's extremely tasty mixed back into the sauce and tossed with pasta. Unless you're trying to recreate the scene from Disney's Lady and the Tramp, it might be better to stay away from spaghetti. Why would you serve something so chunky with something so skinny? <laughs> A little parsley, a little parmesan, and no one will ever guess about the Russian interference in this all-American meatballs. <laughs> the leftovers reheat extremely well and taste even better the next day. Thank you, Bill, for the inspiration and keep up the good work. Here are more culinary tutorials for you to check out and if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.